it's scary, but today is the day that I quit. And that's really scary. <laughs> Made it back to the dock. Grant's on his way to come pick me up and we are celebrating this evening because I have officially put in my notice and I have uh, less than four weeks of work. And I am stoked. <laughs> Super stressful going into that, but my boss was so understanding um, and yeah, it's getting real. In the spring of 2022, we bought a 1980 Downeaster Cutter that was neglected for a decade. We sailed her up north to her new home port on the central coast of California, did a major haul out, and prepped her for blue water cruising. This life is completely new to us, but the dream is far from it. And finally, we see it within reach. For the first time ever, we've moved on to Mundial and are continuing to ready her before we set sail. Thanks for joining us as we acquire our sea legs and say goodbye to land life. inside working on the freezer trying to get that fixed and built and I'm just have a work from home day and yeah it's kind of a cool thing to watch today that is Garrett and Ruth's old boat Serena and we are finally for the first time ever getting our ball serviced Gene, and they're servicing our ball. Yeah, we'll swing back pretty quick. Some of those lakes have gotten pretty thin. Yeah. People often ask how we are managing living on a sailboat with such small quarters. And besides the obvious, everything is a little more challenging, especially if you don't have a location for things yet. The other half of the truth is that it's all still so new and exciting that we hardly notice we live in approximately 200 square feet. Hearing the barge come by and service the mooring was like being a kid when a garbage truck drives by. We are still so captivated by this lifestyle and we haven't even left the harbor yet. Oh. oh gosh, whoops. Come home to the best surprise ever. Not only a new freezer, but ice cream. There's a light in there. What? But it's not plugged in at the moment. <gasps> so cool. Slides in. I feel like a proper galley now. When we bought the boat back in May of 2022, the bowsprit was more of a plank to walk with large openings on the side. It was beautiful, but not so practical for us and our fur crew members. We also had an old windlass that needed to be replaced. 
The windlass that came with the boat was almost more for bass fishing than cruising, and it was also secured to the decking rather than the fiberglass boat itself. So we cut part of the bowsprit deck off to swap out for a better windlass and remount it to the boat. Since our maiden voyage up north, we've replaced our windlass again with a new-to-us windlass that fits our chain. But we never finished the bowsprit planking. Being that the bowsprit is my favorite dolphin watch spot, we decided it was time to complete the refit. We could just, see how that's just a pin? Yeah. We could just do um, splice. splice a line yeah. from, you know, from somewhere, like right here probably. Go like that. Yeah, to get, off, get the chain off the boat. Please. Grant felt a little tweak in his lower back today, so he's kind of taking it easy and he's gonna go upstairs and work on our back stay, um, just splicing it out of this Dyneema that we got. And I'm gonna go and apply our first coat of boat soup. The taper, the tedious part of the Dyneema splice is the taper. Jeez. Prior to applying the boat soup, I sanded down the old varnish. Okay, our first stab at boat soup. Grant just got off the phone with Garrett, who is a boat soup expert in our eyes. <laughs> and it gave us some tips and the ingredients, and now we're gonna go for it. I get one glove. So the tar is used for like a hook. Yep, half, half the can. Okay, this paper towel is now suspect. As the cool kids say, sus, sus. How do you know that? Gen Z commercial. Now we'll go half a quart of barnet. Sure. A little heavy on the varnish. Not by much, though. Go only seed oil. Tongue oil or teak? Uh, teak oil or tongue oil. That's cheaper. This can was two ninety nine. <laughs> said just a little weather dependent tar volume dependent how much dryer you add so he said
While Grant's back was still hurting, I applied our first coat of boat soup to the teak and dug fur. There's one reason we didn't do the entire bowsprit in teak. The cost. We built the rest of the bowsprit in dug fur and cost about $30, whereas if we would have used teak, it would have cost more like $400. This means more funds for the cruising kitties, more Baja tacos. After the bowsprit was nearly complete, I continued finishing up the safety netting around the boat, while also testing my balancing skills. Bowsprit number? <laughs> Lashing? Yeah. Next up is finishing the windows. Grant's outside drilling holes in the new plexiglass um, and he's really nervous because the last time he did this it cracked a little bit um, which is kind of why we've been procrastinating on this project but I think he's doing a good job. So now I can take these out. actually use I got inch and a quarter screws number tens. I don't know what that means. I got this
Flexi off, sand it, clean it, and apply some Secaflex. Grant has left the boat to go diagnose our wind vane that Garrett and Ruth gave us. Thanks. Shout out to Salt and Tar. Um, because we have an autopilot, but we do not want to leave the harbor with not having like a backup autopilot. So we're going to try to get the wind vane fixed and on our boat. Um, and then I am left here to do some projects on my own. And the last time Grant left me to do a project on my own, I definitely made some mistakes. So I am going to go slow and be meticulous and try to get this plexiglass installed so we can have a new nice uh, window. Here it is, our new bowsprit. We even got our safety netting up all around it. For the dolphin watch. Some news. We started a Patreon. Patron? Patreon. So if you want to become a patron and you like what we are doing out here, um, fixing up the boat, setting sail, then please click the link below. And maybe we will see you next week. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. And a special thanks to Stephen Fye, Don Berardi, Steve G, and Charles K for becoming our new patrons. If you like Sailing Mundial, why not have, head over to Patreon to support the channel and check out last week's episode.